Can you overdose on CBD oil? Cannabidiol is an amazing substance with huge amounts of untapped potential. So much so that CBD sales are now predicted to exceed the combined market value of vitamin C and vitamin D. But there are many questions that remain unanswered in this new and exciting world, and one of them is can you overdose on CBD oil? Well, what is CBD oil? For those who are unfamiliar with the term, CBD oil simply refers to a blend of hemp or cannabis sativa L extract and a carrier oil. Hemp naturally produces high levels of cannabidiol, so extracts from the plant also contain high concentrations of the substance. However, CBD is not the only beneficial compound that hemp produces. In fact, the plant produces over 120 cannabinoids and over 100 terpenes that can also be beneficial for health and well-being. Because of this, the most effective CBD oils tend to be those that go through the least processing. It is these oils, known as full-spectrum CBD oils, that contain the highest levels of well-being enhancing compounds. Highly refined extracts, such as CBD isolate, have been proven to be less effective. The carrier oil is the oil in which the extract is blended with in order to dilute it and make it easier to use. The two most popular carrier oils are hemp seed oil and MCT oil. Cannabidiol oil drops are dispensed from a pipette and should be held under the tongue for a couple of minutes before swallowing. This allows the CBD to be absorbed through the mucous membranes in the mouth and most people take their drops two to three times per day after a meal. The effects of CBD oil are wide ranging. While we advertise our products for improving general health and well-being, a quick search of CBD oil benefits on Google will shed light on what else it can be used for. So is CBD safe? CBD can absolutely be classed as a safe compound. According to the World Health Organization's critical review report of cannabidiol, in humans, CBD exhibits no effects indicative of any abuse or dependence potential. CBD is generally well tolerated with a good safety profile. Reported adverse effects may be as a result of drug-to-drug -drug interactions between CBD and a patient's existing medications. As you can see, the World Health Organization concluded that CBD is safe, although there can be some interactions with certain medications. However, scaremongering in the media in recent years has led people to be concerned that CBD could damage the liver. This misleading information was based on people consuming the equivalent of three bottles of 5% CBD oil per day, which is far from the reality of what people actually consume. We'll be taking a deeper dive into the effects of CBD on the liver in future videos to try and disperse some of this misinformation. Well, can you overdose on CBD oil? No. At least, not in the way that you think. It is technically possible to overdose on anything. Having too much water can also kill you. CBD is non-toxic and very difficult to overdose on. However, on rare occasions, having more than you need could cause side effects, such as appetite change and drowsiness. But again, this is very rare. We'll explore more on how CBD affects the liver later on in the video. Nonetheless, as a precautionary measure, the UK Food Standards Agency recommend the following. Not to exceed 70 milligrams of CBD per day, to avoid using CBD while pregnant or breastfeeding, and to consult with a doctor before using CBD if you are taking any medication. If you're wondering if CBD could fit into your lifestyle, please read our blog at browncbd.co.uk forward slash blog or follow the link in the description below. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos all about CBD. So, is CBD oil bad for the liver? Last year, the media was hit with a plague of articles claiming that CBD can be bad for the liver, casting doubts upon a product that was previously seen to be extremely safe. For those who read the studies that these claims were based upon, it was clear that they were gross exaggerations. However, much of the public does not read such studies and unsubstantiated claims can be taken as truth. Fortunately, a new clinical study seems to have uncovered the facts about the effects that cannabidiol has on the liver. So, how was this study designed? Valdicare, a clinical research company based in the USA, followed 839 participants ingesting oral CBD products for over 60 days. Both full-spectrum cannabidiol products and products based on CBD isolate were used for the study. After 60 days, blood tests were taken to determine the levels of the liver enzyme alanine aminotransferase, or ALT, which is an indicator of damaged liver cells. So, what were the findings? Overall, Valdicare found no significant evidence to suggest that cannabidiol can lead to liver disease. However, 
Three of the 839 participants who were taking other prescription medications did have three times the normal levels of ALT. So this study affirms the advice that the industry has given from the start. CBD is safe and well tolerated for most people. However, people taking medication should consult their doctor before using any supplement. As a precaution, it is also not recommended for women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. Cannabidiol products such as brown CBD oil are used all over the world to help promote well-being and to relax and calm the mind. So this new evidence will be well received among CBD users and regulators alike. If you want to find out what people are saying about our products, follow the link in the description below and read our Trustpilot page reviews for yourself. Is coffee making you anxious? One of the most frequently asked questions that pops up on our live chat is which CBD product do you recommend for anxiety? As much as we'd love to help with this question, we can't legally make any medical claims about our products. However, before deciding to spend money on something to deal with your issues, it could be worth exploring if removing something from your life could fix them instead. Bad news, it could be coffee. There's no denying that for many of us, coffee is one of life's great pleasures. The rich flavour and the stimulating effect make it a firm favourite for millions of people across the world. But caffeine, the compound that gives coffee its stimulating effect, can be problematic for people who are prone to anxiety and stress. Caffeine works by interfering with the brain's chemistry and blocking the chemical adenosine, which is responsible for making you feel tired. It also simultaneously promotes the release of adrenaline, which is the famous fight or flight chemical that serves to keep you alive in dangerous situations, as well as playing many other roles in the body. For those who are sensitive to caffeine, this alteration in the brain's chemistry can lead to anxiety. As observed in a study published by the Cambridge University Press, with the link in the description, called Neuropsychiatric Effects of Caffeine. Furthermore, coffee is well known to reduce sleep quality, which can also exasperate anxiety issues. This effectively makes caffeine a double-edged sword against the well-being of people with anxiety. The anxiogenic effects of caffeine seem to be more pronounced at higher doses, and sleep issues can be mitigated by only drinking caffeine in the morning. So even reducing your daily consumption could be beneficial. So should you quit coffee? If you're experiencing uncomfortable levels of anxiety, then reducing or even quitting coffee entirely could potentially help. But coffee also has benefits, such as increased productivity and high antioxidant content. At the end of the day, whether you should quit or cut down on coffee depends on whether the pros will outweigh the cons for you as an individual. If you do decide to quit coffee, proceed with caution. Caffeine is a highly addictive drug and stopping cold turkey can lead to intense fatigue and headaches. It's advisable to slowly reduce your intake, perhaps by swapping coffee for black tea, then for green tea, and finally to white tea over a period of weeks before stopping completely. Even doing so, you could still experience withdrawal symptoms. If the pros of drinking coffee outweigh the cons for you, then CBD could potentially help with this. Many people anecdotally report that using CBD can help to mitigate some of coffee's more undesirable effects. So instead of quitting coffee, some people might find reducing caffeine intake and upping CBD intake could provide some benefits for well-being. This could be either with standard CBD drops held under the tongue or with our water-soluble CBD that can be mixed directly into any drink. Optimal well-being is highly personal and the best approach is always a holistic approach. But for some people, stopping and reducing caffeine can be life-changing. If you want to check out our range of products, head over to browncbd.co.uk or just click the link in the description below. If you liked this video, then give it a like and remember to subscribe for more CBD-related content as well as other health and well-being videos. Head over to browncbd.com to discover a whole range of high-quality CBD products available to order in the UK and abroad, and leave us a comment below with your suggestions for what you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.